fear resistant. Beautiful warm. Oh. Oh. What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast yet another 2v2 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.2 on the beautiful famous classical map Anorian. At the bottom right side we have the green Gondor player Gimli, very creative and unique name I need to say. His ally top right is the yellow Gondor player Ericsson, they are against the white Rohan player CCO and his ally at the bottom left is the red Isengard player David. So Isengard, Rohan versus Gondor and Gondor. I mean, of course, the double Gondor team is actually pretty strong early game against Rohan Isengard because they have the chance to pick two times Elvin Wood, which Rohan and Isengard can't cover at the beginning of the game. And with that being said, they will have also the chance to kind of spam Elvin Wood all over the map, which Rohan, you know, you need to two, collect two power points for this and also Isengard. Needs two power point for this. And also in a one-on-one -on -one situation, Gondor soldiers are by far stronger compared to the peasants. But remember, Isengard has the Uruks, which are the strongest swordmen in the game. We have to hop it. And it's a very aggressive playstyle. And also keep in mind that Rohan has the chance to recruit additional peasants. And with that, I would spam the two Gondors. And for that reason, I would recommend to use the Hobbit for defense. But it looks like he won't get punished for it. I mean, this Gondor player. Top right is about to lose a farm, and also the Hobbit can be cloaked, and also this is the same situation here, CCO should be using his Hobbit to defend his ally's mills. That's what you want to do when you play a 2v2, and you are playing a good faction, and your ally is playing an evil faction. So, Ericsson was able to take one of the farms for himself, that's pretty good, because he lost one of his own farms, and you need lots of farms to get the food bonus for cheaper horses. And this soldier is damaged big time. Only one Elvin Wood has been pleased, and Uruks, they shouldn't fight on it, because not only they have no leadership, but also the Gondor soldiers have increased armor. Okay, so Isengard lost actually two of his three settlements, is about to lose the third one, and also his eco is looking actually pretty nuts, because it was pretty delete the time he lost the settlements, and he was able to fill up the bees very nicely, with the you know cheap wood bonus, making the buildings cheaper. The Hobbit is level 2, Oh nice, it's big by the way. Rohan is a stable up on the field. Um, full beast before the stable. I mean, it's a little bit delete. This gonna play him going for the Faramir. You know, of course, he will again get the chance to show his quality. And the soldiers, they need to fight this first. Because the peasants are about to kill you. Don't lose them. But it, it looks like he doesn't pay attention to this because he's paying attention to this area. But Ericsson is getting a lot of power points. So Lourdes would be a nice hero. The second you see enemy going for heroes like Faramir, you want to get your own Lourdes to counter Faramir and potentially later on also Boromir. Because I'm pretty certain that this gunner player is about to plan uh, to recruit Boromir too. When you want to go for the combos, Boromir's, Boromir's damage leadership is essential. Rohan going for Theodin King very early before the first row hit him. Which is not bad, because the earlier you, you recruit Theorin, and the better it is, you will level them up way easier. And also, the Gunner player is actually using the heal on his soldiers. Hobbit actually dealing a great amount of damage to the hero Theorin. And keep in mind, uh, there is also Lourdes. But keep in mind that Theorin is not a very strong defensive hero, right? I mean, he's very squishy. And Faramir's warning arrow is going to be able to one-shot him from this HP. He will get one-shotted. But Faramir is busy creeping the troll layer top right. This farm is still under control from Rohan, which is pretty good for Rohan. And also, uh, he's helping his ally to reclaim his settlements, two of them, because the soldiers here are also level 2. And you see, when you go for the economical start, it's quite beneficial, because even if you lose your settlements outside, you have a good and steady income from the castle, you know, furnaces, and you will be staying in the game. Gondor, going for the Gun uh, Gondorite number 2. And the Gondor Knights are about to pressure, but there is Eoma also on the field. So Eoma and Theorin side by side. Eoma and his spear throw is able to one-shot the horses. So he will eventually, the longer the game goes on, get to level 4. Unlock the horse lord leadership for 70% more damage, 25% combat experience. With Theorin and the Warchant from Isengard, the Rohirrim and potentially the Rohirrim archers later on are going to get the chance to hit like a truck. So uh, this guy is going to get mounted and he's out here. There is no way you can catch him. Because Faramir is as fast as the Rohirrim, you have no chase or catch potential. There is also Boromir upon the field, but Troll has been slain by Lourdes. And we might see a deja vu situation here uh, from the films, because Lourdes is about to cripple this Boromir, who is hiding behind the cage. 
but he will get crippled anyway. Who's gonna get the last hit? Not one of me, unfortunately, but... Oh, Lurz is getting immune to knockback, by the way. Boromir doesn't even attack him back. He's waiting for Aragorn to arrive, but Cripple is gone. What was that? And he is dead, and Boromir is alive. Spear throw. Oh, he could have been spear throwing him. That would be actually big because this guy is almost level 3. That's going to give him a whole level. He's going to turn and spear throw a Gondor Knight, get level 3 anyway. Now he needs only one more level to unlock his level 4 massive power spike. Because, you know, the thing is about Rohan Isengard combination, they have very easy leadership. And remember, Lourdes is already level 3. That means he also needs only two levels. And you have always Tyrion leadership, which offers you leadership with level 1. And you have Warchan 2 from your spellbook. Later on, you will have Aragorn and Saruman 2. So your leadership cannot be matched by the double Gondor team. Because having two of the same factions, you have limitations but two separate factions give you the chance to have multiple different spells heroes and especially the combination of the good and evil like in the situation between rohan and isengard will have also statue later on in the middle camp potentially a well for the recovery and sustain for the uruks so it's gonna be yeah I, I, that's why i like the good and evil combination in 2v2 matches the most but of course because of the heroes early game uh, rohan couldn't compete with the map control and this farm was under Dude, this farm was until now under control from the White Rohan. That's that shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> that shouldn't be allowed. That's why Rohan was actually kind of kind of rich, you know. Going for the horse shields ne next, which also gives you increased armor versus enemy horses. In this case, the Gondor Knights. They will deal 20% less damage to you, making your Rohirrim more durable. There comes the vision of Palantir with the brand new animation of the patch 2.2. Lourdes is back in the business. Level 3, almost level 4. Again, level 5 is the power spike we are looking for for 60% more DPS, which also works on the allied Rohirrim. So as long as he's staying next to the Rohirrim, they will deal 60% more damage. And again, you know, make the math. Like, this can stack up all together. And in addition to that, which is kind of unfair, Isengard is the one legendary button to make enemy lose all their leadership bonuses. But fortunately for Isengard Rohan team, Boromir is only level 3, so he needs to be level 4 for the leadership and level 5 for the Horn of Gondor. But keep in mind that Vision of Palantir is able to give you fear resistance, making your units immune to be stunned from the Horn. Power Guards, Rangers, but he's not combining them, which is, I think, the right call, because when you combine them, you lose the Porcupine formation, from the tower guards and also the chance to use the skimming formation for the rangers making you deal less damage while not being able to deal the bonus damage with your tower guards against enemy horses and it looks like rohan is going for the you can you look that's also one of the features in the 2.22 version you can sell your units which is one of my favorite uh, features because sometimes you were stuck command point wise you had like units you don't you can't really use and you had to intentionally lose them to your opponent give them willingly power points just to get rid out of them and now you can just set, send them simply into your citadel with any faction you are playing and make space in your command points department three combos isengard's eco cannot be matched by the double gondor team no uh, you know marketplace they will not be that rich but gandalf the gray is gonna be recruited you have no power here <laughs> gandalf the gray so power point wise gimli this is the green gondor he still needs over a whole power point and a bit almost a quarter to get to the Gan of the White, which by the way gives you the chance to unlock the Easter Light. Um, all your abilities deal 100% more damage and also they recharge twice as quickly. So, for example, this one, you can see the cooldown is one minute, it's gonna drop down to 30 seconds. So, you can, you know, rotate between your power powers way more frequently. Your Lightning Sword has four minutes cooldown when you're gray, which is a long time, you know. And also Gandalf the Grey here for the other Gondor, uh, Gondor player. And also he needs a whole power point. So now <laughs> we have two planned Gandalfs upon the field, okay? Two Gandalf the Grey. But it doesn't mean that his abilities don't hurt. Because one thing you need to understand. This Isengard army lacks of armor leadership. Which means if the Visa Plus connects and hits, it will still hit like a truck. I mean, yeah, you get from Theoden a bit and Warchan gives you 50% more armor too. But it's not permanent. In order to get more consistent armor, you need to recruit uh, this dude. Saruman gives you consistently 50% more armor. But what makes Gandalf so special is the Easter Light, which is a big hero counter. It's a very strong single target ability, which can chunk heroes like Lourdes, Theodin, or Eoma. And in order to have access to this ability from Gandalf, you need to get the white 
spell unlock from your spellbook, which unfortunately both Gondor players don't have. But Trebuchet are a great counter. Remember the combos? They have to, they have a one obvious you know weakness, and that's the low speed. So you combining units is beneficial in many ways. But if it's not beneficial in one way, it's because you lose movement speed. So you can not dodge the shots anymore. Like you could, for example, if you have only Uruks or Crossbowmen. War chant, Tower Guards are being chunk, 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 chunk. Is Farami level 5 though? I don't know, but they have Gan of Leadership, which you can see here. There comes the Alvin Wood. Isengard can cover. On the Alvin Wood, you have no armor, no damage leadership, nothing. Gan has to be careful because Cripple is still available for the Lords. Who is the best hero counter in the nightmare for every Gandalf player? It's gonna be a big fight, big fight, boys. Okay, so we have Elma level four, lots of Rohirrim upon the field. One good engage is going to crush everything. Only one trebuchet, two trebuchet. You need to, I mean, Isengard needs to commit to this fight before Gondor has to, before Gondor gets a chance to bring more trebuchet to the battle. Because the more trebuchet, the more nightmare. Also, this Gondor could go for a workshop, but it looks like he doesn't want to do this. And also, this Gondor should go for Faramir. Because two times warning arrow is actually such a big counter to heroes too. Warning arrow is dealing bonus damage to all the heroes it connects. And having two of them will give you the chance to chunk a hero pretty much to 25% HP with only two shots. Like bam bam, warning arrow, warning arrow. Look, they are zooming. This Rohan is playing too passive, so at this point of the game, when you see this, you want to rotate and kill the farms. Destroy the farms, make sure that they are not getting that much money, because for now, they are actually kind of focusing on the one big battle that's about to happen. But the more time they wait, I mean, I think he's going to wait for Saruman, if I'm not mistaken. Let me take a look into the money from Isengard. Yes, sir. It's almost 5,000. It kind of makes sense. But again, Gondor is also getting stronger. Like, this is a very hard camp to conquer, to attack, to fight for when you play Eisen and Rohan because there is only one entrance and the catapults here are going to be untargetable as long as you make it inside, as long as you don't make it inside the camp, you know, which Gondor can simply block with a tower guard. So fighting for the metal camp of Rohan is going to be, uh, Gondor, I mean, is going to be the hardest thing to do with slow units like the Eisen guards, Uruk crossbowmen combinations. And also only two pikemen, so he needs to be constantly paying attention to put them in a place in which they can counter the enemy horses. But this Gondor stopped making horses, he's just bringing more and more trebuchet. Again, that's your legit- Ooh, Beautiful blast, but they don't die because they have a lot of leadership and also because of Ganaf being grey, not white. And you can see the, power, the, the cooldown is so long. In the meantime, we have a big fight here. At this point, when you see the war chant, oh, please look nice. He got chant. You see, imagine, imagine, imagine. Boromir gets crippled. Why would you cripple Boromir when there are two Gandalfs upon the field? That gives a huge potential to the double condo team, but they are not committing to this. Fighting against Warchan is big, a big mistake, but Rohirrim are inting their way into the Tower Guards. That's also something I wouldn't recommend. You cannot win this fight. There is no way in which Gondor's combos can overpower Isengard combos with this much leadership. You can't. They have Theodin. If, I mean, Elma doesn't give leadership to them, but they have Lords, they have Warchant, they are just simply too strong. But the Trebuchet, I mean, it's like a plan, you know, they are like trying to lure them into the middle, but the, you know, the left side team isn't falling for this. If even the, you know, Mirkwood of the, you know, Prince of the Mirkwood Elves, Legolas has been recruited, but he's level one, doesn't matter. This gives you like a huge splash damage, by the way. And again, those units like Rangers, they are very vulnerable in terms of defensive capabilities. And one Hulk Strike is going to still kill them. Faramir is level 7, but Boromir is still only level 3. And that's the major problem for the double Gondor team. And also that they are not really actively trying to do something with the trebuchet. They are kind of camping it out in the middle camp. He has 1, 2, 3, 4 trebuchet up in the, up in the field. And this Gondor player is going to have his Boromir back in the business. It looks like his Ganav got killed. What? He never recruited Gandalf? Really? I didn't know that, really. I thought he has Gandalf. Am I blind? What? I, I swear to you, I saw two Gandalfs up on the field. But I, I apparently I didn't. Okay. So, okay, they are... <laughs> they are... Saruman has been killed, actually. That's good. Uh, does anybody have Gandalf the White? Let me take a look into the PowerPoints. Yeah, Ericsson 
has high power points in the bank but he's not turning his gun off to white for whatever reason and david has um hindered lands they are committing fully but you can see the slaughter Ganoff is not moving from uh, gimli but he's gonna move now oh lords in front of your face is doing this kind of and you're not about to okay finally he's reacting to this but he lost almost two trebuchet lords has been killed again that gives a huge cooldown to the double gondola team i mean this guy is also now his kind of up on the field so two gandalfs but this time they are white okay and again lords is dead so lords has level four it means he will have two minutes revive time two minutes is a long time and now with the white spell your visa plus has only 30 seconds cooldown so two minutes of lords being dead you can use your visa plus mathematically speaking four times and four times two because there are two gainers upon the field they, these are eight visa plus you can get done before lords can be back on the field i mean many many rohir matches upon the field but the problem is they're only level two and the levels on these units are very important and what you should be doing instead of going for legolas is to get aragon upon the field aragon is going to be a more important hero Tindalan is ready for the big for, for the cover. Gimli, this is the green gunner player, has also three power points in the bank. He has the chance to go for the Rohirrim summon or the Ranger summon. But we are still looking for. Oh, Boromir is level four actually. Oh, but he gets chunk, 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 chunk. This guy's not gonna die. Ganaf is gonna be fine. You can also use the shield bubble whenever you want to the magical shield. It absorbs damage. 99% armor for only three seconds but if you time this you can get a lot of value there comes the horn but fear resistant beautiful warm tongue from sariman and heal is going to keep him alive which we can't see look they are losing everything and that dude who was level one a second ago is now level six and saruman is showing quality beats quantity two wizards but saruman is the most impactful one in this game dudes in the last days in the last cast we have seen saruman popping off with the warm tongue and that's the proof that saruman is not weak by all means easily turning this fight in the favor of isengard and rohan isengard is now is now your new master I can't even speak to it. My throat hurts me. Okay, so Boromir. This guy never recruited Boromir. Uh, Ganaf is one of them is alive. This is from, you know, the green one, Gimli. This dude lost his Ganaf. Finally going for the market, please. Um, because he's kind of poorish. He can't, he doesn't have the money to revive his Ganaf. That's a problem. And yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. But I know that now one of the Rohirrim matches is level 5. There comes the Vision of Palantir to give them movement speed boost. Now they are zooming throughout the map. A farm level 3 is going down like it's made of paper. Too strong. I mean, this, you know, you might you might think, okay, these Condor Knights have the, you know, shields of Knight Shields. They have the heavy armor. They should be durable, right? But wrong. That's false. Because this Rohirrim Archers, with this much leadership, they will still kill you in a second. But they are very vulnerable in terms of defense. You can see two shots from Trebuchet. It's gonna still kill them in a second. What is this guy doing? Look, look, he's getting chunk, 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 chunk. Use the magical shield. Oh, heal in the last possible second because... Bo okay. Oh, nice dodge too. I mean, he didn't lose anything out of that. And Gondor lost heal without achieving too much with it. Now, without heal being available, without with heal being on cooldown, Gondor has to be even more careful. Oh, but look, that's smart. That's smart. I mean, actually not, because the middle camp is from the green Gondor player, Gimli. So, what you want to do in this situation is you want to go to this dude who has no middle camp. So, if you destroy his castle, you win. But if you destroy this castle, you can't win yet because you need to still destroy the middle camp. But maybe they want to go for the middle camp, which again, I think that's a much better call. Because fighting in the middle with this many trebuchet is going to be a feed fiesta. You will feed lots of power points and eventually give them the power points they need to unlock eagles, cloud break or even the eod the army of the dead and going for the main castle is going it's all about making a decision that draws the attention okay 
So when you go for the castle, they need to react to this. They need to go to you. They need to come to you. And I like this playstyle because normally when you even experience players in this game, in this game, even very good players, they are kind of drawn like a magnet from the middle camp. They have like the ten, they have like the opinion, oh, I gotta go for the middle camp. I need to destroy this. But that's false. You don't need to do this. Go for the main castle instead, which is an open area and much, much easier to be destroyed. But that's dangerous. You don't want to do this, man. You don't want to bring an explosive mine to your army because one shot from the combo here or from the ranger and you will lose your whole army with your heroes around them. He's playing with fire, but Rohan, has, Rohan is coming to assist his ally with Gimli upon the field. The entire fellowship has been recruited as Legolas is leveling them up. With, he has also the leadership, but it only works for the elves. And unfortunately, we have no elves upon the field. But, you know, when you summon the elves from your spell book, that also will give them additional damage and common experience. Okay, boys. Holy! <laughs> Two parts. Insta destroyed. Instantly. Instantly. Okay, now Hog Strike is coming in clutch. Uh, chunking the tower guards to less than 50% HP. There is no statue yet, but it's building up. We have few trebuchet. A few trebuchet have been <laughs> purchased from the marketplace. But now, look the mind games. Now they are going for the middle camp instead. And Rohan is pressuring this. Uh, oh, nice. He sacrificed one of the Rohirrim, but to destroy two trebuchet, that's very good. Now they have the hit and run potential. But the middle camp is still protected. There are still plenty of trebuchet. Now the Gondor, Gondor team are in a defensive formation. Defensive play style is required to get out of the situation. Rain is still not available, and Isengard is committing. Tower got a full porcupine formation, Aragorn, and they are shooting their own, and Aragorn is going ham. He is going ham. He is using, but Gandalf wanted to stop him, but he can't. Now you can kill this. There is Saruman, chunk him with the Easter light, but Gandalf is refusing to hit his old master. Lourdes randomly dying to a couple of the Skonda Knights, and Isengard is going a little bit too deep for the sake of this Gandalf. Turn He's gonna use the Easter egg on his Aragorn. He's gonna chunk because the Bleed Mouse is on cooldown. But Saruman, and unlike in the films, this fireball can't be blocked. What a fiesta! Many, many mistakes, but it's hilarious. <laughs> Molly. Okay, now we see levels rising to the sky for the Rohit matches, and each level makes them so much stronger. What a good, uh, I mean, it was kind of good, you know, they, he was kind of forcing his opponent to go back to the castle and then going, making the maneuver to go for the middle camp instead. Boromir is getting chung, 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 but Boromir is a tanky boy. Saruman isn't done yet. He has still a Visa Plus available, and that's what he's planning to do. Boom! And listen to me, I think there comes the will of Saruman, and oh, Faramir goes down. Legolas is level almost 8. Saruman is flexing by hitting level 9. And showing the two Gandalfs what a true wizard main looks like. And even Gimli is saying we are not finished here yet. Because I think he got killed. He's only level 1. Uh, actually, you know, Gimli, when you play Rohan against Gondor, Gimli's stubborn pride is so good against Boromir. Because it will shut down early game the Horn of Gondor from Boromir. And later on, even the Cloud Plague from the Spellbook of Gondor and or Rohan. And summon available. It gives now the chance to go for the for the Gondor uh, here, you know. Because this Gondor is an open beast, all you can eat buffet. You can enter whenever you want to. Two parts of the world broken. Repairing those parts will cost you 2000 which is quite expensive. And investing this much money now into Trebuchet, which can easily be destroyed. I don't know about that one. But even though th there are two parts of the world broken, remember, there are still many trebuchet be in between the buildings, which makes them kind of very hard to be target targeted to. So in order to target them, a whole battalion will kind of have a rough time to get in between those buildings. So Rohan was able to get the middle camp, which is very good for Isengard because now he, have, he has a place to get back to and heal up to full HP. His heroes and also units will have no problem to be back to full HP whenever they want to. They get more explosive mines up on the field. Uh, Rohan is only 5.5 power points from the EUD. 
Ericsson has his, you know, Eagles. But the problem with the Eagles here in the situation is there are too many units that can shoot you down. He, not even talking about Legolas, who is now, by the way, level almost 8. He's, he's, he, each of his shots is hitting like a truck, can e kill Eagles in a few seconds. There is lures that can shoot, plenty of Uruk crossbowman combos, and throw hidden arches with level 10. Level 10. You know, the Eagles will get killed in a second. In a second. Rain is available too. And this Gimli, I mean, the player, uh, you know, whose name is Gimli, but playing Gondor, has almost a cloud break. Oh, nice shot! Nice shot! There comes the freezing rain. Catapults, Ains, boom, 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 Ains. Oh my, for lightning sword, Gandalf is getting chunked. He needs to run. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, cloud breaks available. But all trebuchets are gone. The ends, they are not done yet. The protectors of the Fangon Forest is the Gandalf number two comes from downtown to chunk Legolas. But Aragorn is here to protect his crew meat, fellowship meat. But he's manhandling him. He's trying to manhandle him. But Legolas, 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 Legolas. DPS, 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 Legolas. Again, each hit hits like a truck. And unlike in the films in which... They were preparing to fight against Saruman, knowing, I mean, not knowing that Gandalf has returned in the Fangon Forest. This time, Gandalf is not able to block the spells. He was able to make the sword from Aragorn so hot that he couldn't hand, uh, you know, hold it. He was simply blocking the shot from Legolas and the extra from Gimli. But that's not the film. You have not the film bonus here, Gandalf the White. I mean, four failing us all you want, but too strong of an army now. And Rohan has even EOD. Ericsson has Eagles, but he's not using it because he knows there is no point. Oh, but the Rohirrim are in thing for no reason. They are running it down to destroy one trebuchet. Glorious charge has been finally unlocked. It's going to be used. Gandalf is getting chung, 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 chung. And Gandalf can't even get in the range. Gets one-shotted. Saruman is level almost 10. And Faramir and Boromir, the last hopes of the White City are coming. Look... Chunk him, boom, Faramir has shown his quality, killed Legolas. Okay, nice. In the meantime, what is this Rohan? I think this Rohan is kind of setting waypoints and the Rohirrim are simply running into a random direction. Oh, this is from Aragorn or what? Aragorn even level 10. Gimli? Gimli is level 5. Dude, what a game. Look, you see eagles. Eagles, you see eagles? They cannot play the game. Ericsson has been defeated and I think that's going to be the end of the game. Oh, even the last EOD from Rohan showing, flexing that he has the EOD and destroying the trebuchet. And yeah, I mean, how many power points does Gondor have? Yeah, not even close, baby. You know, he's uh, so far away. He has money a little bit, but his Ganaf is dead. His Ganaf is going to come back. My work here is not finished. <laughs> My, your work here is not finished. <laughs> Dude. Saruman and Lords and Boromir. Deja vu from the films. Manhandling by Lords. The last thing you can do. I mean, this, this Cloud Break is also from Rohan, by the way. And give me a spin if you did. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to leave a like to this video and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a track. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.